Hello and welcome back to Transfer Hub. It is deadline day, um, so I felt like what we'd do on this episode is rank Aston Villa's January transfer window and delve into a lot of different subtopics what I've come up with. Uh, and we'll have a real good chat about the transfer window, the plan, the transfer windows to come. Um, I love your thoughts. So if you want to rate and rank the transfer window out of 10, make sure you drop your rating in the comment section down below with all of your thoughts combined on everything that me and Justin discussed. So welcome, Justin. How are you? Good, mate. Looking forward to this one. Delve yeah. into it. Let's so, get going. We'll have a real good in-depth look then. Um, I'm guessing the episode will probably be pretty, pretty long one. Um, so uh, stick around till the end for our ratings at the end. So let's go with topic number one. What was the plan? What was the objective in this window from January 1st? And... We heard what Unai Emery said about what the objective was. It was to bring and improve the first 11. So we know that they were going out and out to improve the first 11. So players to come into Aston Villa that walk straight into the first team or potentially dislodge a first team player, which makes competition for places. I think we... We know that was the number one objective. We know that he was looking for a specialised winger and he was also looking for a striker as well. So with that in mind, that was the remit for players to come in. There was also another remit to move the deadwood on, the players that we don't want, the players that completely bloat the squad, that, that are just here picking up a wedge, that we don't fancy that much, that a surplus to requirements, and number one, simply aren't good enough for Unai Emery. So that was the remit, in my opinion, and, and, and what the words that we, we'd seen from Unai Emery. So, Justin, having said all that, how do you think we've done based on that? <sighs> how do I think we've done... I think I totally agree with everything you've just said. I think that, um, you know, improve the first 11, bring players in that that basically would take, like you say, the, the places of the current starting 11, because that's the only way you really are going to improve to a point where you're going to get, you know, into the top six, which is ultimately the, the next real target for us, isn't it? You know, mid-table is now, hopefully, then next two years is, is getting into the top six. So how do you do that? And that, that, Obviously, within the transfer strategy on the playing side, it is the most important thing is improving the team and making sure it can compete and become better. So how do you do that when you are in the position we're in? Is you buy very, very, very good top end starters at other clubs players and and it's obviously been quite difficult to get the players in that they, they really want. Um so the other part of the transfer window is to relieve the squad of, of the players that aren't required anymore that aren't either good enough or that just don't add value to the first 11 um they're taking up spots they're taking up wages and, and the managers had enough time now to, to assess the squad and he's, he's made you know opinions on all of them um there was obviously a couple of loans in there that that were just ended um that we didn't need anymore as well so that was bloating it a little bit uh, and then get rid of players that that realistically aren't going to take us to the next level, and and we need to free up space, we need to free up wages. You know the financial implications of football is obviously very very important going forward. So if you can't get the players in you want, probably make sure that you you try and start balancing the books if you like and getting the players out that are, are, are just not adding value to the team that are, haven't hardly played we're going to go into more detail I think in a bit about individuals and what we've you know we, we have brought in and, and what's gone out but overall I think the plan was improve the first 11 um, and get rid of players that, that are, are just not wanted anymore um, I think we've done the second thing 
extraordinarily well. Uh, something that's that's very difficult to do: get players out that are on decent wages, find them new clubs, find them new homes. Yes, we haven't shipped them out permanently. I think Gilbert's gone out permanently, yeah. but the others have gone out on on loan, so they've got a chance now to go and establish themselves at other clubs. And if they don't get moves there, then other clubs can look at them and think, you know, what I fancy him, I fancy him. So they're putting themselves in the shop window, which. Gilbert never looked like he wanted to do previously, but um, yeah, hopefully that then then in the summer when when we we come back and the, it opens again, we can properly ship all these players out permanently. Yeah, definitely. So, man, it, this is sort of like an evolving conversation because some points may overlap, but s- stick with us. So, my next point was stick to plan A, right? So. When I'm, when I'm saying about stick to plan A, it's that we could have identified a target to come to Aston Villa in this window. And for whatever reason, we may feel like the price was far too high. The club that we were trying to get that player for might have valued that player far too high for our liking. And we might feel like that in the summer, we can then go out and get that player because that Fee may be lower. I mean, you know, in this window, it, it's it's a difficult one anyway. And I think everybody always says January is a very difficult window. And that is simply because the season is still ongoing. So where you're getting that player from, let's use Gwen Doozy for a situation. I mean, Marseille, for example, are still in their season. They might have aspirations to get into a certain position. So they might not want to sell Guendouzi to Aston Villa. They might set that bar, that ceiling of that player's value at top, top end bracket because he's worth to them in this window a lot, a lot of money. And I think that is always part of the problem. You know, you look at clubs now like Everton, Southampton, they're having to look at spending £25 million on a player that's probably not even worth that. He might be worth... Nine, ten million pounds, but because they're in a situation where they have to spend because they're in a position where they might be getting relegated, there's all these different permutations. And and I think what we have done and the position that we are in as a club at the minute is because we are middle of the road Premier League at the minute, you know, we're 11 points from the relegation zone. We won't be really sucked into it, in my opinion, that we can sort of sit back and say, you know what? We don't have to go and spend 30, 40 million pounds on this player because we don't think he's valued at that fee. So we'll just wait. We'll wait until the summer and we'll reevaluate and we'll go after our plan A signings then. And I think that's the beauty of the position that we're in. If you look at last January when... We signed Coutinho, Chambers and Luke Dean. Gerard had just come in. We were still trying to survive. We were still trying to stay from stay away from the relegation zone. But I think in this window, we've got that beauty of we're not in the relegation battle. So we're in a safer area to go after signings. And I think that is the position we're in. And I think... You know, fair play to us because we haven't sort of gone, you don't want to come, let's go and get plan B, plan C. And then you're ending up with players that you don't want. And in the summer, then you're going to have to reevaluate where you are. So, you know, I weren't really thinking, I didn't really want Dembele. And I just felt like if we'd have signed Dembele in January, me and you, Justin, we think that we want to go out and in the summer get a real decent striker. If you've signed Dembele and you've signed Duran and you've got Ollie Watkins and you've still got um, Cameron Archer knocking about and then you want to sign another striker, you know, you're, you're left with Dembele and you've, you've sort of got to say, well, you've done all right for four months, but we don't really want you now. So I think we've bided our time and I'm okay with it. And we'll come on to Unai Emery and the transfer strategy in a second, but... Um, do you want to add anything on my thoughts of Plan A? Yeah, I think you've pretty much summed it up, to be honest. I think, you know, Plan A 
is identify your top targets and go and get them. That's plan A, you know, and people go on about, we should have had, we should have had a, back, a, a backup, we should have had a plan B and a C. If you can't get him, get him. If you can't get him, get him. My only thinking, and we're not privy, like I say, I've said in the past two actually, it's a block behind the closed doors conversation, but the fact we haven't gone out, it's pretty obvious we wanted to go and do, I think that's pretty much set in stone for me. And the fact we didn't go out and get a, another player means that, you would think that the club are pretty confident of, of, of finalising that deal come the summer. And the fact that like, Percy's come out, John Percy, today, and he's pretty much the, the sage, really, of Villa transfers. And he said that Villa are more than comfortable about trying to get their top targets. That's the key bit for me, their top targets in the summer. And they don't, you know, we've seen this with Duran. We do, we do due diligence on all of their targets. And, and they're not just plucked out of thin air or they've had a good couple of months let's go and sign him these are players that that uh, you know have been scouted and, and looked at for a long long time so you don't just throw that out the window because you know you've you've come up against a bit of a block now if Gwenduzi's told his agent to tell Villa I do not want to sign for Aston Villa I've got no intention whatsoever of playing for Villa now in the summer or next year I've, I've just I don't want to go to Birmingham. I don't want to sign for Villa. They're not the club owner. Then we move on. That's when you move on. But you've obviously we've obviously had enough encouragement th- throughout these negotiations that a that, that we can get a bid accepted by Marseille, and b that the player actually wants to come and play for us. So if that's who we want in that position, that's just one example. Then I'm more than happy to to wait and uh, you know and. and and do it. The key is not panicking and not not worrying that we're gonna. And I, I agree with what you're saying. If you're in the bottom six, it, things aren't working. So you have to go out and do anything you can to try and revitalise your team. As we've seen, Everton scrambling about trying to find players and teams down the bottom. So you do basically have to, to a point, panic by because you've got no choice. You, you know the players you've got aren't working, so you have to go out and try and somehow get your squad going again. And conversely, if you're currently like a Newcastle are sitting comfortably in the top four, that is the time to really kick on and use your position in the league to try and get that top top player in. And we're not in any of them positions currently. And I know the argument. I know people will be shouting the screen, but we still could get Europe. Yes, that is that is still a possibility, but I think is that a good enough reason that we've got an outside chance of Europe to not go and get your number one target and to just accept that you want the second one or the third one, like you say? You could have, potentially could have got Dembele for a fee, but was he our number one striker target? And like you say, if we don't get Europe this season, that's a wasted opportunity of going into the summer and getting the real number one target that you want for the next three or four seasons. It's very difficult. And the clubs that we are currently in that fight, if you like, if you're going to say we're in a fight for European places, and currently on paper and points-wise, we are. We've got Chelsea sitting around us. They've just gone out and spent £350 million on players. Liverpool are still... We can't compete with that. We're not in a position to compete with that. So to say that us going out and buying two or three decent players who we could attract can compete with that, you can't. Liverpool are massively underperforming. It could carry on. You know, they seem to be in a bit of a rut, but you would think at some point they will start firing again. So those two are going to be, you would think, the favourites to lift themselves up the table. And with Newcastle currently sitting in, comfortably in the top four, the established top six then becomes a top seven if if Chelsea and Liverpool get any kind of form together. So you, you're looking at eighth and to finish any higher than eighth, you've got to basically get above Chelsea, Liverpool, yeah. you know, and them teams. Yes, I think Brighton are catchable. Yes, I think, you know, one or two of the others that are above us are catchable. Definitely, without question, because I still think we've, we've regained. I know we'll come on to what we've been left with in a bit. So these are all things that you, you, your plate spinning. I think that's the thing. You, the club are spinning plates, and I like the strategy at the start. I still think the strategy is right now, and because we haven't managed to get our number one targets in now, does that mean you throw all that out the window and, and just say let's just get anybody? For me, you don't. So I'm happy with the strategy. Yes, it would be nice to get one or two of our top targets in. It hasn't happened. I'm not panicking. I believe, I trust the process and I trust the manager. 
So that moves us on now to Unai Emery's transfer strategy. <laughs> right. That's a nice, nice I've segue tried, there. <laughs> I've tried to gauge how the convo is going to go as a producer of a podcast. I think we've been talking together too long, Luke. We know each so, other's minds. That nicely puts me on to Unai <laughs> Emery's tr- transfer strategy. Now, for many, many years, it's felt like we've never had one. We haven't had a transfer strategy. And I'll try and just give a brief history of why I feel like we haven't. So, Dino days, get promoted to the Premier League. We had no players. So, what we had to do is kind of what Nottingham Forest have done, is try and sign a load of players, Mm. such as, you know, your Nakambas, your Luis. You sign all these players to create a squad. And with that, it was based on trying to survive. And that's how I felt like the policy was at the start with um, Suso. Suso then got moved on and then we had Johan Lang. And what I felt like the policy was there was Johan Lang finds the players, Dino coaches the players, Dino gets what he's given. So we sold Grealish and then we went out and got, you know, Bailey, Danny Ings, uh, Buendia. You know, you work with the players that I give you. And to an extent, that kind of worked at the start when we was in that COVID season with your Troy Ores, with your players like Watkins coming in, Cash. That kind of worked for that season behind closed doors. We had a we had a decent season. Um And then it sort of fell apart when Grealish left and, you know, the the Bailey and Dino lost his job. And then we got put with Gerrard. So the strategy then was to back Steven Gerrard, give Steven Gerrard what he feels like he needs. Luca Dean, Coutinho and Chambers. Again, there was no model there. There's, there's, There's just giving the manager what he needs. Up steps Unai Emery an elite coach, a manager and someone that you want to stay at Aston Villa for three, four, five years' time. And it's not always about just giving the manager what he wants. It's about him working and finding what he needs to be able to do his job and create a side which can get Unai Emery's finished team to where it wants to go. So we know that Emery wants to win a cup with Villa. We know Emery wants to get Villa into Europe. We know the owners want to get Villa into Europe. So that is the long-term goal. But it's now about finding and setting a culture and creating a philosophy with the right players that fit what Unai Emery needs. Now, I 100% back Unai Emery. I think he's a fantastic coach and give him the tools and the correct players, I feel like he will fulfil what we need him to do. But it's also about having a transfer strategy and something that we can, you know, we have a bit of more of a model rather than just out and out players. And, and I think that's important. So what I want to show on the screen now is the the short term Unai Emery. And I think you can all see that in seven games that Unai Emery's been here, the short-term Unai Emery, coaching the current players that we've got, having a system and a style of play with what we've got, currently works wonders. And I think that is important, that the short-term Emery is really, really good. The long-term Emery is giving him time to build the team that he needs And I think the patience part is key. And I think like what we've said about plan A, having the right targets, that comes with time. And that is my general gist and my general point that I just want us to have time and and get the right players in because we can see that the short-term memory works. We can see week in, week out. We can give anybody a game. But long-term, we need the right players And with that, like I've just said, comes time and patience. And, you know, we now know that um, Emery wanted another sort of person to work alongside uh, Johan Lang. So maybe that's something that's going to 
come in in the summer as well, someone else and a, a, like a different vision where everybody's working together. And, and, I, and I like it. And I like that, okay, we've not brought in the players that we want, but we've not been, we've not thought, oh shit, like we now need to just go and get somebody in because we're panicking. So I think Emery's short-term, long-term, the vision of what we need to do, I think it's important that we stay on track and we don't deviate because, you know, like we mentioned earlier about a January transfer window when we were we scrambling down the bottom with Dino and we bring in a striker like Ali Samata. Like, it, no, we don't do that. We don't bring in an Ali Samata because it, it's a short-term fix. It's deviating from the strategy and from the plan. So that, that, that for me, has got to stop. So I think we're slowly starting to see that there's now going to be a little bit of a, a standard at Aston Villa and, and a standard of player. And I think that is also important. So, Justin, what are you saying? Very I felt good. like I've, got, I've rambled a no, bit there. No, I enjoyed listening to that. It made, made total sense, to be honest. Um, I've been jotting down some points while you've been talking. So, I totally agree. If you track back, so basically back to our Premier League uh, return under Smith, so, you know, utterly agree with you. He had to build a team with a really tight budget. What if 13 players, I think, came in average of about 10, 10 million pound a player, which in the modern day is nothing. Uh, and we did manage to cobble together a team. So that, that transfer strategy was, but as I said earlier, that, that you come at it from a different point of view. You haven't, you're not buying high end players. You're buying players that can just tick a box, do a job, get us hopefully enough points to stay up, which is like you say what Forrest are doing this season, and they're making a very good job of it. So, so that was that was sort of a strategy, but it was a bit scattergun. It wasn't massively thought through. It obviously was thought through, but it wasn't like we need him, him, and him. It was like right, we've got this much money, we need this many players. How can we get that many players for that amount of money? We're in a different stratosphere now. Gerard comes in and he's tasked with building a team that can can do what um, the, exactly, exactly the same task as what Unai Emery came in to do. Uh, Gerard had exactly the same thing. You need to now get us into Europe, take us to the next level, mid table, then Europe. That's your next two targets. And because, in my opinion, he he, he hasn't got a massive track record and a backstory of of managing. He had he obviously only managed Rangers and. You don't really need the highest of end of players. You know, you need probably average Premier League players are good enough to win the league over there, up there. And he hadn't; he'd only ever built one team, and that was that one. So he didn't have to to be buying players at the top end of the market, did he? So he hadn't got that track record of how to how do I build a team that's capable of winning the highest honours in European football. So then fast forward to Unai Emery, a bloke who has got a really proper track record of, of building multiple teams, not just one team that's done well, but more or less every team he's been at. He's got a tried and trusted system Then he knows how it works, he knows what he wants, and he knows the players that, that he needs to fit into that system. And quite frankly, our first eleven isn't too bad now. It, it, it looks it's it's being moulded into a, a pretty decent Unai Emery starting eleven. Um, considering he's had to inherit all these players, he's done a pretty good job of moulding that squad and the first eleven to get results in the way he wants to play. So in a way, he's been probably a little bit fortunate, really, that he's got some really good players that's to start the journey. But it's, ut- it's utterly pointless just bringing in players of a similar quality that we've got because that won't take you one. So his now biggest job is to take us to the next level. So his strategy is improve the team and he knows what to do. He knows how to do it and he knows who he wants. So it's pretty simple for me. We get the players that Unai Emery wants and if they're not currently available, we wait until they are available and then we improve the squad. And we don't panic and we don't worry and we don't have a meltdown. We just enjoy the journey. Like I've said numerous times on this podcast, it's not about the final destination football. It's about the journey. 
And I am loving the journey we are on with Unai Emery because it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be brilliant. We're going to keep improving season after season, window after window, and I'm all over it. So we're not going to live or die by what we've done in this window. We're going to we're going to build slowly, and the strategy for me is perfect. So we've just got to stay with it, stay with the program, trust the process, and we'll be fine. Definitely. Right. So let's turn our attention then to January windows, past and present, how they've gone down. So some of these names cover your ears, Villa fans, because they're not great. We've got we've got Salafu, Genus, Dawkins, Baston, Silla, Bradley, Jemba Jemba, Samata. We've also then got last January, Coutinho, Chambers and Luca Dean. So that was last January. Whereas now, if you think about last January's window, Coutinho, Chambers and Duke Dean, all three currently aren't in Aston Villa's first team. So that just shows how a January window isn't the be-all and end-all because the ones we got last year don't even feature in our first team now. Um, so that's the what we've had in the past and then what we've had in this window then. So let's have a... Let's have a discussion then, Justin, about what we've seen in this window. So, what's happened? We have signed Moreno, who looks really good. He looks good at attacking. Um, defensively, he looks okay. I think he's going to get stronger and stronger. So, I think that was Unai Emery's first signing. We know that John Duran was more of a... More of a Villa signing. We'd been looking at him for six months and Unai Emery sort of gave it the green light and said yes. Um, and we also know that in this window, it's been very difficult for teams to sign strikers because there's not a lot out there. So, you know, I think if we... Everybody would look at, say, Brighton and say, they're absolutely fantastic because they pick up these young players... And they turn them into absolute gems. And the narrative around when Villa do it is, is actually too young. He's not good enough to start in Villa's first team. Is he a bench player? Is he going to come in and go straight on loan? So for me, we now know that John Duran is going to be in the first team. He's going to be ready, raring to go against uh, Leicester. So I think it's it's that whole... Age doesn't shouldn't really make a difference. If you are good enough, you are ready and more than capable of playing. So for me, I'm really excited by John Duran because, you know, you look at Bellingham for his age. Wait, is he 19, Bellingham? John yeah. Duran's 19. So I'm not saying he's going to come in and set the world alight, but what an opportunity for him now. We've got two strikers and... Ollie Watkins is pretty robust. He's very, very rarely injured. So let's touch wood anyway. But he's now got an opportunity where he's going to be coming off the bench. We can have a look at him. There's no pressure. But it also, the way his characteristics are, is a little bit different to Watkins as well. So if you think of Ben Teke vibes, he's on that sort of general ilk. And what we find with an Unai Emery's team is that if Duran has to come in, he's not going to be told to go and do what Ollie Watkins does. He will be doing to his key strengths. So that enables us now to have another little chink in our armoury that we've got a different option off the bench. It's not something that's just carry on and do what you're doing. So I think with that, it's, it's exciting. And I think, you know, if I'm looking at the general market as well in January for strikers... Man United signed Veghorst. That is what Manchester United are doing. One of the biggest clubs in the world are bringing in Veghorst on loan. From Burnley. So, you know, it's like, if that's what they're doing, then, okay, I'm happy signing a 19-year-old striker that's going to have the potential to grow. And we know that there was a lot of clubs sniffing around Duran as well. I think Man United were one of the ones that were... We're looking at him as well. So I think it's really, really exciting. Troyore has been recalled as well. So that bolsters the squad, bolsters the bench. Let's see what Unai Emery can do with Troyore as well. Because, um, you know, 
we know what he can do on his day. He's brilliant on his day. But we've only got four months left of the season. All of Feb, all of March, all of May, April and all of May. It's four months. So if Troy Allray can come back and do something in four months, then that's absolutely brilliant. So just in thoughts on what we've got and then I'll move on to what's gone. Uh, yeah. Uh, you've subbed it up again. Pretty good. Um, I love Moreno. I think he's a great asset. I think he's a great player. I think he was, he's added, already added um, that bit of extra quality down that left-hand side. And I think he'll also help uh, Luca Dean, hopefully um, push him that little bit harder to, to try, try and get his form back. You know, he's got to, now he's got to fight on his hands to get back in the team, hasn't he? And if he can, then he's got to play very well to keep Moreno out. We've got two pretty, pretty good left backs now in the squad. So I think that was a very good addition. <clears throat> Obviously something that the manager had um, highlighted that he wanted to improve on. He, there's a certain style and there's a certain way that he likes his left backs to play. You know, we, we know that the right back sort of sits in a little bit more and he's less probably flamboyant going forward if you like and but he does like his left back to, to, to bomb up and down and, and and we've seen already with Moreno that that yeah, that's exactly what he likes to do so he's added another dimension for us so I think he's a really good pickup for not massive money either I think it, it, it's an, a, a good signing and then you move on to to Duran I see the Duran signing like you so I think it's someone that we've been tracking for a while he's obviously been on the um on the radar of quite a few clubs because of his sort of rise to prominence over the last 18 months, two years from a young kid breaking through in Columbia's sort of leagues at 15 through to, you know, the MLS and then fast track straight into the MLS sort of first team. Um, and, and then we've made the move to, to, to sign him. I think like you, so I think Emery was probably said, you know, we've looked at this lad, you know, we'll take you through everything that we think, he could add to us. Uh, and then, you know, it's up to you then whether you think, you know, it, it, Emery does definitely seem to have the final say on transfers, which I also think is imperative, especially with a, a manager of his standing. And, and like I said earlier, he knows exactly what he needs to, to, to make this team successful. And, and he's given it the green light. I would think that he was brought in as a supplementary striker. I think letting Danny Ings go, I think that the plan probably was to go out and buy, and it will be to buy another top, top end striker. Now looking more, well, obviously looking like it's going to be, barring the last two hour <laughs> scramble that we're suddenly going to sign one, it's going to be the summer now. But So I think a top, top striker is definitely on the cards in the summer. And John Duran would then be allowed at his age to, to, to develop, develop, you know, without the pressures. But he's got an, uh, probably an unexpected opportunity now to to really put his marker down in, in the first team. Ollie Watkins, like you say, he's, he's nailed on and he has been basically the first choice striker all season. Starting most games, I don't see that changing, so that's fine. And then you've got a player on the bench who's chomping at the bit to to come on and impact games and and show everybody what he can do. And because you know we didn't go out and sign that top end striker to complement what we've currently got, he's got a great opportunity. You know why not? Young kid, nothing to lose, everything to gain. He's got them ringing words of endorsement from Juan Pablo Angel in his ear. He knows what we're all about. So go and go and make a name for yourself, kid. Go and you know, go and light up the Premier League. Go and score goals into the whole end and and start your Villa journey off with a bang. And 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 I really hope that can happen. We'll see. We'll see him develop. But yeah, and tr- I like the Torora. I think that's a, a sensible option. Obviously, that you know, again, another position where he wanted to strengthen, he couldn't get who he wanted, so he's looked and thought, We've got a player on our books currently. That, that he's not when you watch Bailey, it's basically sometimes like watching Toro, isn't it? Over the last few seasons, and it, an incredibly frustrating figure sometimes. A player that one week will look, look absolute well beater, and next week you think, Just drag him off, he's just having no impact on this game whatsoever. So you know, give him a go. Who knows what under Emery, what, you know, what you could get out of him. We know he, he's a scorer of, of great goals. He's not a great goal scorer, but, you know, if he can come in and score three or four goals towards the end of the season and and help the squad, then why not? We we own him. We pay his wages. So get him back and utilise him. And I like the Kane Kessler Hayden recall as well. I yeah. think that's a good one. Yeah, really good. So that was incomings then. Outgoings, we had. 
Marvellous Nakamba, alone to Luton. I mean, you know, some of these, some of these players where they've gone to is just shows that even though we've left maybe one or two areas a little bit light, some of these players were never, ever, unless barring a massive injury haul across the whole squad, were never, ever going to start games for Aston Villa under no. Unai Emery. So I think that's one point which that's I would the, like the to, key point. The to key make point. about yeah. the squad looking thin is that if you're worried about it being thin, then I'd much rather give a youngster a game than possibly give some of these lot that have gone out a game anyway. So Marvellous Nakamba has gone out on loan to Luton. He's played zero Premier League games for Aston Villa this season. Augustinson was sent back to his parent club and then sent on loan to Mallorca by Unai Emery. He played three games, started one. Sanson has gone to France. He played two games, starting zero. Archer has gone on loan to Middlesbrough, fair play. He played six games, started zero. I think it was crucial for his development that he continues to get minutes and goals. Gilbert had his contract ripped up, left on a free, played zero games. Danny Ings left for £15 million. He would have been having a year left on his contract in the summer. So his fee would have been around three to five million pounds in the summer. So Villa would have had a massive loss on Danny Ings. He ended up leaving for 15, which halved what we paid for him. He played 19 games, started eight, averaged 45 minutes per game, scored six goals, two penalties, four from open play. Bednarak went back to Southampton, played five games, started three, and Aaron Ramsey's gone to Middlesbrough. So those are our outgoings where majority, like I said, just never, ever going to play um, and have gone. And, you know, the only big one there is Danny Ings. And I, I understand that, you know... <sighs> It leaves us with Ollie Watkins and just, Dur uh, and just Duran. You know, I, 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 I clearly see that, that we've only got two strikers. But again, we still have to make money. We are still a business. And if for four months to go, so yeah, so Feb, uh, March, April, May. So for four months, we're a little bit short with a striker. But we've gained £15 million. That, to me, still is good business. I, I, I can't see how it isn't good business. What are your thoughts, Justin? Yeah, we've been talking about this a lot in the day because we knew we were doing this tonight. So we've we've both sort of come up with more or less the same stats. And, and realistically, the weakened squad argument, I think it's it's not it's non-existent, in my opinion, um, because all those players, if we've got a fully fit squad which we'll go on to in a minute, we'll go through what we're left with. Not many of them make the squad, to be honest. You know, we've been left with 21 players after all those gone. And if all are fit, then Archer, Bednarak, Sanson, Augustinson, the camper don't get in the squad for me. The only one that gets in the squad is Ings. So you're taking, take Ings out of the equation for, for a second the rest of them have played about a dozen games between them. None of them starting, all off the bench, just playing the odd 10, 15 minutes here at the end of the game. So none of them have added any value to us this season at all. You know. So then the Ings argument, the one true player that's added value to us this season, he's only started eight games. Out of those eight games, he's only finished three. So he's only played three full 90-minute games this season. Ollie Watkins is our main striker. We've played 21 games. Have we played 21 games? I can't remember now. This season. And he's basically started most of them. So I, even if things have stayed, for me, that would have carried on for the rest of the season. Ollie Watkins is our main striker. And, and he fits the Emery system better than Danny Ings. Fits yeah. the system. 
I know, I know for a million percent there's going to be times in the in the remainder of the season that we are either behind in a game or drawing a game with 20 minutes to go. And all you'll hear around you is, if we only had Danny Ings, we could have chucked him on now. He might have got us a goal. And that possibly could be the case. But again, we are looking at a long-term vision. And I'm totally in agreement with you. His age, the contract, and for what he's offered us this season, based on those statistics, and, and I think the key one as well is six goals, but it's two penalties. If he if he's not on penalties, he's scored four in 21. You know, that's not a great return, is it, for me? No. So I think it was the right thing to do to let him go. And we've got another body in, an £18 million striker who's a current international, hopefully can fill his boots. You know, if he's, if Durand gets three or four goals to the end of the season, that's more or less the same ratio as Danny Ings has been got. So I think it's the right move, definitely, for him to, to have moved all these players on. And I think we've done really well to do it. I really do. I think I think we've done really well to get these players out. Um, and I think we've trimmed the squad. As I say, none of them have particularly added value, bar innings. I don't think we'll miss any of them on a match day. And we would have to have a horrendous injury run now to, to, to start saying, well, you know, if if we had Nakamba, he could have played. Or if we had Gil. I mean, you've got to lose four. Well, you've got to lose Matty Cash, Ashley Young, and Kane Kessler Hayden for, for, for Gilbert to even be in the conversation. And even then, you probably play Konza right back or Chambers. So he's not going to get a game, is he? And like you say, there's four months left. There's 18 games left. That's just, that's basically one game a week with breaks. Yeah. So we can even manage the squad's load as well. So I, I just think we've had a, we've had a blinder on outs. 100% we've had a blinder for me. 10 out of 10 for outs. 100%. And you, you don't know as well. I mean, I've always had this sneaky feeling about Sanson's attitude and Gilbert's at time. You know, I don't know this for a fact, but... I think the Gilbert one, definitely. I think Sanson has, pro- has been okay attitude-wise because I don't think you would have seen him even in the squad on a match yeah. day if his attitude was wrong. So I think on that front, you know, it's, it's a good... It's a good thing because even like, you know, they could be a bit frustrated that they're not playing and they're always in the squad and they yeah. never come on and stuff. So there would be that vibe. So that's gone now as well. So I think that's yeah. good. So let's have a look. Then we've got two more points then. Let's have a look at the squad of the first team and a bench then. So if I uh, share the screen with you now. So if we get rid of that. So this is... The current Aston Villa first team. Now, for me, and I guess a lot of you out there, this team basically picks itself. But there's there's arguments maybe for cash or maybe for... I think that Patino. team picks itself. Do, yeah, I think it really does kind of generally pick itself. So, without injuries... This is the side week in, week out. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what it could look like just with um, the bench. So maybe now we go for something that looks a little bit more like this player here then. that Let's say that's Troy Ray. That's yeah. going to be Troy Ray because we, we binned the graphic of Troy Ray off um, when he left. So uh, I think we did anyway. Yeah, right, we have to you. bring him. Let's oh, get Ryan on that. Coutinho, um, you're going to go with McGinn's back. You're going to go with Den Donker in this <coughs> position. Um, there. You're going to go with Luca Dean. Who you got here? Then you're going to go with Chambers, Cash. So this is pretty much what the Villa bench could potentially look like. Carlos looks like he'll be back soon as well. So the only one where we don't really have too much cover. Oh, Ramsey. Yeah, you go Ramsey there then. So you could I have Ramsey. play as a holder, but you could probably put, you probably swap, switch, uh, put Ramsey there, then switch McGinn and Ramsey over. Yeah. So you'd probably play McGinn more in that holding role. 
So this is bench vibes, squad vibes of what we've got. So we've got more than adequate cover here. Adequate cover there until the end Jet of the season. back soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Chambers Robin. <laughs> is still here. Carlos is coming back. Then Donka can obviously do a real good job of seeing out games as well. Coutinho off the bench. Ramsey, McGinn, Buendia. You've now got um, Troy Ore. You've got Caden Young, who signed a new deal as well. So you've got that option. You've got John Duran as well. So... I don't think that's too bad, Justin. No, I think, for me, you'd want two players in every position, minimum, in a squad. And when we were losing all these players over the last sort of few days, and it started out, it, it was every day a player was going out, wasn't it? I was starting to think, oh, Christ, you know, are we going to be stretched a bit thin? But I've really sat down this afternoon and gone through it all. And, and we're fine. We are fine. Yes, there's players there that, that you know, you'd want upgrades on. You know, Chambers came in had a blinder when he first came in last year. This season, when I've seen him, he's been a little bit off. Carlos is an unknown quantity, and we don't know quite when we're going to get him back. So that could be, I would think, by the end of Feb into March, we might start seeing him maybe starting some reserve games and getting his match fitness up, because it does take a bit of time to get up to, to full speed. So I would think by mid the end of March, we might see him back in match day squads. So that's a little bit of a worry, but Chambers can do a job there. Dendonka can play at centre half. There's, there's players there that can play multiple positions. McGinn can play left, right, centre. Ramsey can play left where Coutinho is. Dendonka can play sort of centre mid. You know, I, I am I really like Caden Young when we saw him play in them little games when we we was back um, in the World Cup. Still a isn't it? Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to seeing Durant see what he can do. You know. And we've got, now let's say the worst case scenario happens and we lose four or five players. We get one sent off missing for three games, a couple of long-term injuries and a couple of get people are out for a couple of games. Then these players are going to have to come and play and then your bench, you're going to have to fill it with kids. And I wrote down a few kids today that have, that have been in and around. Defensive-wise, Josh Feeney, excellent prospect, you know, he's been in and around the first team. He went on the preseason tour. He's played in, in those games on about, you know, when we went out and played, he played. Bogard's always had a lot of people talk about him. Kane Kessler, Hayden, he's back now. Everybody loves him. Midfield wise, you know, Iron Reiki always impresses me whenever I see that kid play. And I'm not saying these kids are going to come in and play 20, you know, the last 18. They're not. I'm just saying, should we get. A serious, which is the, the thing that's been thrown at Villa now, is if we get injuries, what we're going to do? And we've proved there we've got a first eleven and we've got a second eleven that that can can cut it. And the problem then is depth on the on the bench. That's where if we did have an injury process, what happens to the bench? What happens to our ability to change a game if we, it's not going well? You know, I, I really like Tommy O'Reilly. Uh, I think he's a good player. We've mentioned Caden Young. Brad Young was pulled back off his loan. You know, they're not you know, they're not kind of players you want starting, but they would add depth into the squad and and I, you know, Villa fans love a young player coming through, you know, giving a chance. So there's definitely players there. The standouts for me are Feeney, uh Caden Young, uh I do like O'Reilly as well. I think he's a good player. Uh, you know, so 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 I think what we're trying to do is put a more positive spin on it that's, that's happened. Yes, there's lots of fans out there that are bitterly disappointed that we haven't gone out and spent £100 million and got our... You know, the, the first choice of Villa this this window was to go and buy our first choice targets. It hasn't happened. But we've shipped out a load of players that we don't need or don't want. And we've been left with starting eleven that's basically been the starting eleven for the last seven games where we've won five, drew one, lost one. That hasn't changed. That's still there. We haven't lost any of our key players in that respect, barring Danny Ings. I know that. And we've got a, a second eleven that can sit on the bench. Like I say, that that don't forget that second eleven, you can't get all them players on the bench. You can only pick nine of them. So there's going to be two of them that are going to have to sit out. So we're not as bad off, I think, when you actually sit down and write it all down on paper and look at it. And I go, think okay. it was. I think it was basically because it was the Southampton bench which was getting people going because there was two keepers yeah. on it. But at the time, 
Luca Dean was injured, McGinn was injured. So you're basically going to add players based on them two coming back anyway. So, yeah, and I'm with you. And I just think, especially with youth in football, it's about being given the opportunity. And it's also about them then taking the opportunity when it arises. Because, you know, this is very controversial what I'm about to say. And, you know, you know, I, he's a player. He's a good player. Chucker maker, right? He's a good player. Whatever you think of Chucker maker, every time I've watched him for Chelsea, he's looked like he's come on and changed the game. Against Man City, when he hit the post and... He looks really good against Man City, Chukamaker did. But they've now gone and signed that many players. He's never going to get in that Chelsea side now. No. So without him being given any opportunities and the time to grow and the time to develop now because they've just moneyballed it, his career now at Chelsea is pretty much done and dusted. So what my point I'm trying to make is if Caden Young gets... A couple of start, a couple of starts, or a couple more minutes of twenty minutes here, thirty minutes there, and he does really, really well. He'll have stamped his authority on the squad, and then in the future, going into next season, then he's got that. He's in Emery's head. Then he's and he's thinking, I don't want you to go out on loan because you played really good for us. So he's then got a bit more of a future. So maybe this can open the door for some more players, like younger players. Maybe this could... We don't know about Duran, do we? You know, I, I like traits that he looks different. He's a hold-up player. He can create his own goal. I keep thinking of Ben Teke. Now, if Duran comes in now and comes off the bench and bags a goal against Leicester, right? Imagine, hypothetically, he comes off the bench and he grabs the winner, right? You're going to be like... This kid, he's grabbed the winner, right? He'll get 20 minutes the next game. His career's already going on a better trajectory, right? Yeah. You know, and the hype starts to grow and the buzz around him and everything like that. And we're on to a winner already. So, you know, I look at teams like Benfica of all their young players that end up coming to the Premier League for £100 million. Maybe we've unearthed a little gem with Duran. And that is... How I would like to see our policy going as well. We don't try and search for these forty-five million pound strikers. Maybe we can find one for nineteen million pounds, and they grow and develop at Villa. I really liked that. Was it Osorio rumor from the the kid at Chile, um, yeah. the little winger? I love that we were looking at him because it's about finding those players and identifying them that possibly can come into Villa. And do really well. So, and, and the young saying, attacker at um, the second division in Spain as well. He looked a really good prospect as well, didn't he? Yeah. So, I think I think that's that's important that we we just look at those type of players and and you know I think everybody would generally say, you know, don't put too much pressure on Duran. He can't live up to what Ings has done. He can't do that. He can't do that. But why not spin it and be positive and think the kid's going to be coming off the bench. He could have a good impact and he could do really well. So, I mean, I'd always like to look at the positives than a, a negative scenario anyway. So, we'll move on to our last point then. Um, is rate the window out of 10. So, I'll go first. Justin. Can we do one for incomings and one for outgoings? So, as a collective, as a collective. And I am going to rate the window 6 out of 10. So... Reasons why I'm giving it a 6 out of 10 is that I love that we've brought in a young striker. I, I, I just love it. I love the vibe of it. So whether it's going to be good or bad, whatever. I like the vibe of it at the minute. I like that we got Moreno. Um, I, would love to, I would have loved us to have done more. Like, who wouldn't? Who, like, who turns down nice, shiny things? I would love a new player in at Villa and the Emery thing to get going. But I like that we haven't panicked, and I like that we haven't just gone for any old Salafu, Sila, Jemba Jemba, right? Short-term fix that's just going to be no good. I like that. 
Then the outgoings, I like that we've... I like what he's done with Augustinson and just thought, you're not good enough. See you later. I like that certain players have gone. I like that we've been able to move them out. So, yeah, I'd have liked more. But, you know, it is what it is. And we will sign the players in the summer. And that's just where I'm at. So, everything that we've discussed on this episode for 55 minutes, I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. So... Yeah, there we go. And, you know, no big players have left as well. You know, Martinez is still here. Luis is still here. I mean, he, Arsenal were looking after him last in the summer, weren't they? And we've still got him now. So, six out of ten for me. Could do more, could do a lot more. But we're not in a position where we've got a gun to our head that relegation's threatening and we don't have to. So... There we go. Justin? Yeah, I'm probably more or less at the same as you, to be honest. I think I, I think 10 out of 10 for outgoings, um, probably 5 out of 10 for incomings. So overall, as a, as a, as a whole, if you're rating the whole window... No, I'm, so, I'm going to say 6. <laughs> I agree with you. I think I think the club would be disappointed they didn't get more in. I think they would have... They, set out with the intentions of, of getting more in. It hasn't happened, so they'll be disappointed. And and, and I think I'm, I, I'm, I'm a, I am obviously a bit disappointed that we haven't signed more players, but I, I, I sound like a broken record. I am trusting what we're doing. I trust in yeah. what we're doing. I trust the manager. I trust that in the summer that, that they'll go, you know, gung-go gung everything and they'll really try and get these deals done that we need to get done. I trust Sorry, so do you think it'll make a difference that it sat, for example, when Emery came in in mid November, he'd got sort of like a month and a half to identify certain targets. Do you do you think it'll be easier because we'll be able to identify from now what we need? Uh, possibly. I think I think he would have, you know. He would have obviously been speaking with his, his previous club about what he wanted to do for them, I would think. Yeah. And there might be a bit of rollover from what he fancied for them to us. Now, the budgets were probably very different. I think Villa's budget is probably a lot more than their budget would have been. So he's probably been able to upscale his targets. He's probably got players that he would have loved at Villarreal, but he knew he couldn't get there for whatever reason. That Either they couldn't afford them or the wages wouldn't have been you know, good enough there. So... He's probably upscaled what what he you know he, he plays that he could he could get at Villa. So I, I think I think they'll be assessing it all all the time. It might be that one of the players that we really was hell bent on in this window a better target. You know, there's nothing stopping us getting another a better player that's come available. In, you know, in the summer that could happen. You just don't know, do you? I like that we don't. Announce things, and we don't, and we keep everything very quiet because you know all we've had this window. I haven't been on Twitter, but from what I'm hearing is we've had all the in the in the nose have been out again, and and unless you know Percy says it or Fabrizio, they're the two probably most trusted people. You know the Guendouzi one was the big one of the window. There was a bit of noise around Dembele, but I, I'm not 100 percent sure we were after him. Um, if I'm honest, the only one I think definitely we were 100% going for was Gwen Doozy. So everybody else, we haven't got a clue no. what the other targets were. And he said he wanted to strengthen in every position. So the summer will be brilliant. I can't wait for the summer to come. This window, overall, bit disappointed. That doesn't mean I don't trust what we're doing and I don't back them a million percent what they have ended up doing. I back the players that are left to finish the season on a high and I back Emery all day long every day Spot on, so we'll round it up there and we've been on for about an hour so it's a bit of a long lengthy one um, but I just want to say thanks to everybody that's watched us this month, Transfer Hub it's been mad, there's been episode after episode uh, I've tried to you know, keep up to date with all of the rumours and entertain you guys at home. So thanks everyone that's been watching and enjoying the content. Make sure you drop a like on the videos. If you do want to become a member, it's one ninety nine a month. I'll put a link uh, to the top of the comment section as well. So you can do that if you want to help support us. And yeah, 
Full content resumes tomorrow with our match preview ahead of Leicester. So we are back talking just about the football. Uh, so we'll be looking forward to playing against Leicester on Saturday. So uh, cheers, everybody. Um, and yeah, it's been a bit of a mad, mad window, but I uh, <laughs> hope you've enjoyed this episode. And we've just wanted to just come on and give our thoughts to where the whole window was and everything like that. So cheers for I watching. Think, I think the key now is put this behind us. The window shuts. Let's just enjoy the rest of the season and see what happens. No pressure. Let's just see where, where we where we end up. Up the villa. Up the villa.